Hello everyone, my name is Maha Abdel Mohsen. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Computing and Mathematical Sciences at the University of Greenwich. I'll be presenting my research topic, which is enhancing the social skills of children with ASD by assistive technology. Firstly, I will explain what my topic is about, then I'll discuss my contributions. I'll then explain what is autism and its deficits. After that, I'll give a brief about assistive technology and its use in enhancing their social skills. I will then explain the development of my tool. I will show you some results and lastly, I will conclude. So that's the motivation be behind my PhD, which is social skills are the skill that human use to communicate with each other verbally and non-verbally. The deficit of social skill is a core symptom of children with autism spectrum disorder. Children with ASD who haven't received social skill interventions on an early age can show a sign of regression to the extent of becoming nonverbal. Therefore, early intervention is essential for them. Although robot assisted interventions have proven to be beneficial in training children with ASD, their accessibility is limited. Therefore, this research aimed at developing a tool that achieve widely accessible and provide social skill training program that's a replication of a successful work that has been done using physical robots. The developed tool is a desktop virtual environment that employs a virtual robot to interact with a child. And that's the contribution of my research. I have combined two assistive technology, social robots and virtual reality with social skill training program as a novel approach to enhance the social skills of the children with high functioning autism. The second contribution to my PhD is I have developed an open source tool that can be widely accessible and can be easily used by parents and teachers to practice scenarios that aim to enhance the social skills of the children with high functioning autism. Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder that appears at an early age and affects the child development. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, one in 54 has been identified or diagnosed with ASD. ASD is more than four common in boys than girls. So each child with ASD may have different characteristics or different combination of characteristics. However, some deficits are commonly observed in them. These deficits are repetitive behaviors such as rapidly flapping their hands, repeating phrases or sounds. Impairments of verbal behaviors such as little or delay language skill, and impairments of nonverbal behaviors such as eye contact, gestures, and facial expressions. These impairments are contributing factors in the deficit of social skill, which is a core symptom of a children with ASD. Assistive technologies are an alternative means to overcome the limitation and the cost of traditional social skill training programs. Assistive technologies are adaptive and assistive devices that are used to improve the functional capabilities of people with disability and elderly people. Children with ASD cope well with rule-based and predictable systems, so assistive technology became a promising solution for training their social skills. Assistive technology has been implemented in virtual environments and social robots to enhance the social skills of the children with ASD. So virtual environments, we have two types or, of virtual reality, immersive VR, in which the user is completely surrounded by the virtual environment via head-mounted displays or projection system. And the non-immersive or the desktop VR is a type of VR that uses computer monitor or TVs as a displays, such as video games. In recent years, virtual environments and virtual characters became a tool for training and rehabilitation of the children with ASD. Robot-assisted interventions. So children with ASD feel more comfortable around robots than humans. So social robots have proven to be beneficial for this group because they offer consistent interaction and these precisely the sort of interaction that children with ASD prefer. 
wide range of studies have been conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of robot-assisted interventions in enhancing the social skills of children with ASD. These studies conduct, these conducted a study employed in different humanoid robots with different characteristics, such as now Xeno and QT robots. So, although the promising results of employing virtual environments in training children with ASD, the generalization of the acquired skills in such environment to the real life is still an open question. Most of these studies don't conduct follow-up sessions to assess whether the children transfer the target skills and behavior they learn in the training sessions to their daily life. The high cost of immersive VR equipment, its heaviness, discomfort, and the lack of general availability are potential barriers to widespread of these interventions. So desktop or the non-immersive VR are preferred over the immersive VR. Despite that children with ASD are more responsive to feedback given by social robots than by a human, the accessibility of these intervention is limited. Robot-based interventions for children with ASD are difficult for many families to access due to the high cost and its efficient use requires being monitored by a technician or a professional. One of the main criticisms in VR and social robot interventions has been the lack of involvement from parents and teachers in the intervention sessions. Additionally, a limited number of studies took place in real life settings such as child home or school. Therefore, the idea of my PhD is developing a tool that employs a virtual robot to interact with the child through an established social skill training program and to ensure the transition into being a parent or a teacher, not a researcher managed to it. The developed environment is a desktop virtual environment which employs a virtual robot that interacts with the child through a social skill training program. Unity 3D game engine has been used to create the 3D interactive environment. The tool has been developed in two languages, English and Arabic, as the evaluation process conducted in Egypt. The developed training program targets three social skills, imitation, emotion recognition, and intransitive jobs. And as shown here, the developed the emotion recognition training program consists of three phases. Each phase contains a pre-test, four training sessions with two sessions per week, an immediate post-test and a follow-up post-test after two weeks. Phase one aims for recognizing the basic six emotions from body movement, change color of the face and change eye shape. Where the virtual robot express an emotion and asking the child, what is the name of this emotion? Three choices appear on a separate button in the screen and the child has to choose one of these answers. Phase two aims for expressing emotions through imitation, where the virtual robot asking the child, for example, what is the expression for happy? And the child has to express this emotion. The moderator judges the accuracy of this emotion. Phase three aims for recognizing emotion from social context, where the virtual robot narrates a story where it's a main character and the child has to identify the appropriate emotion for this story. Different backgrounds have been designed, taken into account the plot of each story. And these are some pictures from the emotion recognition training program. The intransitive gesture training program consists of three phases. Each phase contains pre-test, four training sessions with two sessions per week and post-test and follow-up post-test after two weeks. It has the same protocol as the emotion recognition training program where phase one targets gesture recognition, phase two targets gesture expression or production, and finally phase three targets recognize and produce gestures in a social context. And these are some pictures from the gesture training program. The experimental setup divided into two settings, on-site and online. 
due to the current situation and the lockdowns, an online version of the tool has been developed and launched on a website to be avail available for wider groups so parents can use it with their children at home. And that's down there is the link for the website. And that's the layout of the on-site setup. Each participant in the experiences the tool individually. The teacher rules will rule was controlling the tool by choosing the scenarios and assess the child throughout the session if asked for help. I was the observer on the on-site sessions. The, ses the length of, in of the intervention was for approximately three months. The protocol consists of 24 sessions. Each child received two sessions per week. Each session lasts for approximately 20 minutes, but sometimes it depends on the child's progress and attention. For the participants, 15 children with high functioning autism aged between 4 and 12 years participated in the study, boys and 5 girls. All participants were verbal and could read simple words in order to be able to interact with the tool. We had 4 children on site and 11 online. Regarding the results, significant differences were found between the pre-test, post-test, and the follow-up test in the three phases for each training program among the 15 participants. The mean number of times the participant answered correctly in each pre-test, post-test, and follow-up test was calculated to be converted. These figures show the mean number of correct answers in the three phases of the intransubjective training program. In phase one, the participants' performance in recognizing the 11 taught gestures increased by 25.5% in comparison between the pre- and the post-test. And in phase two, the perform performance of the participants increased by 18.2% in producing the gestures. And finally, in phase three, increased by 16.9%. These scores of the po of the follow-up post-test indicate that the, lear the positive learning outcomes maintained two weeks after the training sessions. And for the emotion recognition and expression training program, the emotion, the participant emotion recognition skills increased by forty percent after receiving the four training session, and their emotion expression skills increased by. 26.8%. And the results obtained from recognizing the appropriate emotion from social context show 23.3% increase in the participants' performance. Some emotions was easier to be recognized and previewed than others. The confusion in identifying the surprise and disgust emotions might be due to the importance of facial expressions in showing those effective expression. It might be hard to reflect these two emotions without using actuated eyebrows and mouth, which our virtual robot lakes. This is consistent with some evidence that the facial expressions are essential for recognizing some emotions. Furthermore, these results support previous studies that indicate that the disgust and the fear emotions are difficult for children with ASD to recognize. And that's consistent with the evidence that says children with ASD have particular deficits in recognizing negative basic emotions. Additionally, in the third phase, some participants found it hard to differentiate between the, the happy and surprise in the storytelling. They choose happy instead of surprise. And then at the beginning of, of the intervention and at the end, the parents and teacher were asked to complete a pre and post questionnaires to assess the, the effectiveness of the developed tool on the social skills of the participants. The questionnaire consists of 16 items, including three skills, effective, effective understanding, which is emotion recognition and expression, motor skills and play skills, and finally, responding to interaction. The outcome from parents and teacher questionnaires suggests that there is an improvement in the participant's social skills, as shown in the table, the difference between the mean and the standard deviation in the pre and 
and post-cochlear or before and after the intervention. After two weeks of completing the intervention program, the parents and teacher were asked about the generalization of the taught skills and if they notice any changes in their children. Parents and teacher mentioned mention that they have seen improvement in the participant taught skills, and these are some of their feedback. Firstly, I notice a difference with my child abil ability to recognize emotions. I have noted an improvement in my child imitation skills as he started to imitate my action and my words. He starts to express his feelings more. Sometimes he says, I feel blue, because in, in the intervention program, we taught him the, the, color, the, the equivalent color for each emotion. He understands more gesture now than before. And so in conclusion, an open source tool has been developed to be easily used by parents and teachers to practice scenarios that aim to enhance the social skills of children with high functioning autism. The tool has been developed in two languages, English and Arabic. The design social skill training program is a replication of a several training programs have been used by the state of the art. The intervention study presents encouraging results showing that the developed environment that utilized a virtual robot helps enhance and train emotion recognition skill, emotion recognition and expression skill, gesture recognition and production, and the imitation skills in the children with high functioning autism. And so that's it for, for my study and feel free to ask any questions.